Hey everybody, Dan Holstein here, helping your business take flight. And uh, pretty excited today to be sitting here with Jamie Harsabart from, he's the CEO of Webility Solutions and Lumetti. Uh, welcome, Jamie. Yeah, thank you, Dan. It's uh, great to be here today. Yeah, glad you could make it. So tell us a little bit about you, your company, and, and what you guys do. Sure, I'm a, I'm a software developer. I've been a software developer for about 25 years now. And we've got two tech companies here in Hamilton. Uh, Webility is focused on a lot of custom software development. Uh, including in the healthcare space. But last year we started up Lumedi, which is a healthcare specific startup. And mm -hmm. uh, we've been working on a lot of cool projects and including some COVID-19 initiatives lately. How did that evolve? What, and where are you at now? Yeah, when COVID-19 started to affect the community, we were, um, because we're working with a number of healthcare partners, we were looking at what we could do to assist them. And our first initiative was called Community Watch. And that mm -hmm. was a population-based uh, research study here in Hamilton. Um, it actually collected data from about 20,000 people in the area, which was uh, fairly incredible to us. And we started being able to track some of the underlying trends uh, locally related to COVID-19. And then more recently, we've initiated Safe Start, which is a building on that. But instead of doing a, a population-based um, tool, we're now focused on return to work and how we can assist um, companies, organizations to be able to return to work safely and using a similar type thing where we're using a combination of surveys and other data collection means to be able to determine whether or not people are operating in a safe work environment, track compliance, and so on. Awesome. So you guys are pretty agile. I mean, you when, when did Community Watch start? That's just a, a month or two ago? Yeah, it was, it was the middle of March. It was uh, the week of March break when everything was starting to shut down. Yeah. And, um, you know, because we have a healthcare platform already that we're able to leverage, we managed to get the community watch system up and running, including mobile apps, and actually only a couple of days. A couple and of days for the whole website and, and apps as well, like two, like literally two days. Yeah, th that's correct. We, <laughs> that's we had the awesome. idea. It was a Wednesday Wednesday afternoon. We were sitting in our boardroom mapping this out, and uh, on Friday evening, we submitted the apps to uh, Apple and Google for their review, and then the next week, we had them live in the app stores. That is awesome. And so that that happened fast. And you said that you got 20,000, you were already able to track 20,000 different people's symptoms throughout the Hamilton area? Yeah, we started out, we changed the questions a couple of times. We were working with the Hamilton Academy of Medicine and a number of researchers um, at McMaster and some of the other local um, institutions. And so we, we were tracking everything from symptoms to the effect on employment to people's compliance with public health directives and, and trying to track all the different trends going on. Wow. So at first you're focusing on what's what's proximate. Now we've got this challenge. Let's see what we can do to help. And now your focus is more on recovery, which leads us into Safe Start. So let's unpack that a little bit. So help us uh, understand how Safe Start works and how, how a company would uh, you know implement or, or use it and to help return their, I guess, customers and, and team back to the workplace. Sure. So we are looking at the different guidelines being produced by public health and by the, the different governments. Um, in Ontario, for example, there's been uh, about 60 different policy guideline papers given out by the government on different sectors of the economy. Wow. Obviously, a lot of them are fairly similar, but they talk about the need to really assess employees before they come on site. Um, you know, establishing that perimeter around your, your work site or your workplace yep. and ensuring that people aren't coming in that are displaying symptoms uh, that have a fever or, or anything like that, um, as well as being able to educate the employees, provide them with the proper uh, protective equipment where necessary, um, ensure that social distancing and so on is being followed. So we're looking at all of those guidelines. Um, and the one thing that really struck out to us as we were talking with some of the industry people is that the um, government has indicated right in, in their guideline documents that this is all medical data. And it's right. always been a, a little bit of a gray area when employers are starting to track information on employees' medical information. Privacy and, laws um, and all that come into play with, with that, right? Correct. So, yeah. uh, you know, we were looking at what we could do related to COVID-19. And all of a sudden, we started getting industry people talking to us and saying, well, how do we actually track and store this data in a compliant manner? What, what does it mean that it's medical data? And of course, that, that means it falls under the personal health information legislation, which in Ontario would be PHIPAA. Yep. And there's similar legislation all throughout North America. Um, as to how you can actually collect, how you can store, and how you can use the information that's being collected. Uh, this is a really big thing, and I don't think it gets talked about enough um, in today's world. Uh, the, the government is putting a lot of responsibilities on business to provide a safe workplace, to be able to track information. And, of course, historically, companies have not had to deal with 
personal health information and, and all the different nuances around how you can collect that type of data. Right. So it, trying, sorry, go ahead. We're trying to provide something that takes all of the privacy, all of the risk of being able to do this away from the employer. We'll put it in a system um, that's tested been verified to be safe and compliant, and they can make use of that to track their employees. Interesting. So I know uh, my, coming from the IT business and still staying in close contact with a lot of uh, IT service providers, they're really working hard to secure all the work from home and secure offices. Hackers have never been you know, more productive or busy or devious, I guess. So having that, that personal information, I think, would be quite a liability for a business in order to have to handle that. So but with what you guys are doing, that's all stored according to all those uh, government guidelines. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, great. So what do you think is some of the factors that's going to be, that will be affecting people coming back, um, especially especially team? Because what I'm hearing um, is that some team members are a bit afraid to come back. They, they want to come back. They want to get back to work, but they maybe have somebody at home or that's close to them that might be you know, immunocompromised or something. And they're really fearful around, if I come back to work, what's that going to mean for what happens when I come home? Am I going to, you know, am, am I going to have a safe place to go? Or are you seeing that as well? Yeah, and there's been a few surveys out uh, that have been general um, employee surveys that different companies have run, and you're seeing a lot of employees have a fair amount of trust in their employer that they're mm-hmm. gonna that they have their best interests at mind. Uh, people's biggest fear actually is their coworkers, and they're worried about whether or not their coworkers will comply, and, and how can their employers actually maintain a safe workplace. You know, it only takes one employee to ignore the fact that they're that they have a fever and come into the workplace. And if they happen to have COVID-19, they can infect a large number of people really quickly. And so establishing these perimeters and then making sure that people are being asked on a daily basis prior to entering, uh, which is also what they're doing already in the hospitals with doctors and nurses. um, These things are key because people are, we we can really increase compliance if we ask the right questions in the in the right manner and, and get people to declare these things. But you've got to you've um, taken it to another level as well, right, Jane? Because someone might not even know they have a fever. They might be feeling a little bit off, but we have that whole mentality of I'll tough it out and go in. But you've got the thermal imaging kind of solution for this too, to detect if people have a fever, right? That's correct. So in addition to a, a pre-entry health survey, uh, we can supply employers with a, a thermal imaging camera that will detect uh, skin temperature and it can tell if anybody has an elevated uh, temperature that indicates a fever um, then that can do that all automatically and in fact we have created this system so it can be completely contactless you can do a pre-entry survey on your phone you can come in that has a very visible display that you can display as, as you go in you can also yeah. scan it uh, using a QR code so you don't have to touch anything when you're when you're going in and you can still um, track everybody's entry and exit to the building. And as you walk by the camera, it will also detect whether you actually have a safe body temperature. Um, and it will, in conjunction with with the mobile app, will record that against yourself as an individual. Gotcha. So one of the things that we're all getting used to in terms of, you know, the situation with COVID at retail or other businesses is the, the social distancing lineups and things like that. So with that thermal imaging camera picking up on temperatures, is that going to slow people down getting in or can it it can process that people quickly or? Yeah, it can actually, you can have multiple people walking by the camera at the same time. Um, we partnered with a really innovative company here in, in Hamilton called Long and Vision um, that they are experts in thermal imaging. Mm-hmm. And the, the system that we integrate with, with them, um, you could have quite a few people walk through the field of view of the camera and it's actually able to detect each individual and to um, ascertain the, the temp- whether they're at a safe temperature of each individual going through. Um, so there really should be no slowdown on, on pre-entry into a building. I think it's going to be really awesome for, to, for business owners to know there's something like that to, you know, to t- take some of the fear away from the staff that you know, they can go to work and be safe. It's going to make it a little bit easier for business owners, too, to encourage their team to come back, knowing that they've got a safe environment, too. So for any of our, our viewers out there that are interested, they're looking to reopen and, and want some advice or are looking for something like what you've got in terms of Safe Start, what's the best way for them to reach out and get in contact with you? Yeah, well, you can view a lot of information about Safe Start online. SafeStart.ai is okay. the website associated with it. And myself, uh, if you want to contact me directly via email, uh, jamie at lumedi.org um, is the email address. And I'd be happy to answer any questions people have. Awesome. Well, Jamie, look, thanks so much for taking the time to chat today. And thanks so much for what you're doing to help the community at large and the business community as well. We all really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Dan. All right, awesome. Talk to you soon. Take care. Take care.